Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 17, episode 12. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. Okay, so I think the show comes on later tonight. Um, episode 13 I have COVID and today is the first day and I think this is like day five or day six that I actually feel comfortable enough to talk <laughs> so I uh, watched the show uh, uh, earlier today and um, we'll just go into this review and see how it goes um, I think that I heard that this particular season has 16 episodes and um, they'll be taping the reunion sometime this week and I really am looking forward to the reunion and I'm looking forward to the end of this season <laughs> That's, this season has not been what I think they thought they were about to be giving us uh, I'll do my best throughout this video to try not to cough so much and <laughs> sneeze a lot I've got the sneezes and the coughs I have no idea what the heck is going on anyway episode starts off with the realtors you know letting Terry and Heather know that their house sale is the third highest selling house in the history of Orange County and that they have three weeks to get out but now they have to find a place that they can live with their children because the place that they bought in LA for $14 million isn't big enough for their entire family. Which, you know, she says that she bought it for her and Terry to live in years down the road, which I don't understand that. If she was trying to go off to LA to relaunch her acting career, you know, why is, why is this supposedly for years down the road? I'm assuming that at some point they were going to buy another house in Orange County for the kids and and for their family and then she just live out there when she's working I don't know I don't even care these are rich people problems Taylor decides that she's gonna have some kind of fall festival and she gets all the girls together which I thought was a really good idea and I thought that that was really cute that's something that me and my girlfriends would do except for you know we wouldn't be catty and vulgar anyway I remembered that before I started having my COVID symptoms, I had seen online that Shannon is downsizing and moving out of her place that she was renting now that the girls are all gone off to school. So Taylor came over to help Shannon, um, to help Shannon uh, pack up the house, which I thought was really nice. And that to me also shows that they're friends off the camera because, you know, where was Tamara? and Vicky and all the rest of the girls I'm just saying then we see this scene where Emily has decided that she wants to start riding motorcycles she wants to get her motorcycle license I don't know why this seems storyline driven I have no idea but I agree with Gina stick to riding the horseback you know stick to horses I just think motorcycles are really pretty and everything and the jackets are real nice but um they're just so dangerous. It scares me so bad seeing people on motorcycles. And that was even before, you know, one of my relatives got into a really bad motorcycle accident. I just, I'm scared of motorcycles. So Gina then lets Emily know what Jennifer told her about Heather at the dinner when um, Heather brought up the fact that if it wasn't for her getting that attorney for Gina, she her kids would have been taken by CPS and I think that Emily was right this is so crazy it's the second episode in a row where I'm agreeing with Emily and it's not just my medication anyway Emily says that you know Shannon just doesn't like you and that's the truth I don't know what it is but she just doesn't like you Gina and you know to be honest I, I don't like Gina either but I was team Gina on this one you know I think that Shannon absolutely had no rights 
no rights whatsoever to bring up Gina's children in the middle of this argument. Gina had a DUI. She needed an attorney. You gave her the name of the man. The man did his job, and I'm sure Gina wrote him a check. You didn't do much. You just gave her the name. Gina actually could have went through the yellow pages. Do they still have yellow pages? God, I'm old. She could have Googled. She could have got on the Google and found her an attorney. Now listen, there are thousands upon thousands of people who get DUIs every day. And all of their children do not get taken by the CPS. Listen, the only reason CPS would have been involved is if Gina had them kids in the car and they couldn't find a family member to come get these kids. Then they probably would have had to call the CPS to come and take care of the kids until a family member could come and pick the kids up. Shannon was absolutely wrong for this. Now Tamara, I, I can't stand this woman. Tamara comes over to Shannon's house and first thing she says is, oh my God, John, did you spend the night here? I don't think so. I think that was all set up. John showed up early in the morning looking a mess and grabbed him a bottle of hooch as he walked out the door as if he needed something else to drink. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. John is not staying the night at that house. They were just trying to prove a point, trying to pretend that John was over there. Shannon talking about how John always makes excuses of why he has to leave. He's got his dogs. He's got stuff to do. His kids are at the house. Um, Shannon's kids are too noisy. These are all red flags. These are all signs that he's truly not into you. This is all something that you as a grown ass woman should know. This dude is not it. He is not the one. Let it go. Move on. You deserve better. There's other people in the world. What you should do is drop John and pick up a therapist, a real therapist. It's just given weird. This grown ass man who is supposed to be single can't spend the night at your house. He's acting like a man who's married. I mean, it's weird. You know, married men usually can't stay tonight. Then she goes on to say that these are all issues that her and John has, and it's none of Heather, Emily, or Gina's business. Well, if it's none of their business, stop getting drunk and telling them. Put down the liquor. Put down the Belvedere. Put down the Tito's. Put down the goose. Stop telling people your business if you don't want it known. But while you're sitting there next to the devil, crying your damn eyes out she's the one bringing all of your information to the damn tv i can't wait to see you on the reunion how are you going to tap dance around this bullshit that you have been sitting there this whole time talking about your relationship with john with tamra and telling us a little bit of information in this particular scene that you don't want on tv and blaming it all on emily gina and heather especially blaming heather no ma'am no ma'am, no ma'am. It is Tamara bringing it up. Then Gina and Emily joining parts. This is your friend's fault. And mostly yours though, because you should shut the hell up. And I really hate to say that I agree with Tamara on anything, but I agree with her that the fact that these two people, John and Shannon, at the age that they are, are not discussing marriage, especially since Shannon really wants to be married again. It is another red flag. And that's just my opinion. I can also tell you that I don't really appreciate Ryan having a confessional. Ryan, what the hell? Why does he have a confessional? I think that Ryan is full of shit. And my advice to you, Jen, is girl, don't marry him. Do not marry him. This dude has mentioned many, many times that he has never been faithful in any relationship he has ever been in. To me, he's just an unpaid gigolo. Um, Ma'am, move on. Move on. Now, Tamara and Eddie at the gym, Tamara's full of shit. She's there talking about how Emily and Heather are bullying Shannon. Girl... If you don't shut the hell up, now they're bullying Shannon. Okay, no, Shannon is full of shit and they are calling her on it. And Shannon's eyes are closed to who you really are. And I'm getting tired of the whole situation. It's ridiculous. And then her trying to say that, you know, 
Terry and Heather set up some fake paparazzi shots at Disney. Who gives a damn? Every reality star that I know of at some point or another has set up some sort of paparazzi. They all do it. They all do it. And I am sure that Tamara and Teddy, we don't give a shit Mellencamp, has done it also. Knock it off. Who cares? She makes that comment again about, you know, Heather's IMDB being in the 1900s and she's not an A-list celebrity. I tell you what, Tamara, you're down on the Z-list and you sound like a jealous hater. You are just jealous of Heather. It's coming off as jealous because Heather's really rich. And I'm tired of Tamara and Eddie talking about their disgusting sex life. Girl, go to hell on. Why did I want her back? Now, Heather and Shannon meet up for lunch. And you know what? Heather's sick of the shit. She really is. She is tired of it. And I appreciate that they threw in the flashbacks of Tamara starting these conversations about Shannon and Heather shutting them all down. Thank you for coming through production. This is all about Tamara. This has nothing to do with Heather. Heather has not said anything about you and John. I think that Heather has finally had enough and she called Tamara out for it. This is ridiculous. Listen, when Heather made that comment that there is no vault, she gives everyone the combination and I'm sick of it. I absolutely burst into nothing but crazy laughter as sick as I am. I said, Lord, have mercy. She is absolutely right. She is absolutely right. There cannot be a vault. If you are too busy talking, shut the hell up sometimes. Stop telling us about your perfect relationship with Johnny boy. Why does she keep saying that she loves John Jansen more than she has ever loved anybody else? Why do you keep saying that, Shannon? Is it trying to convince herself that she loves him more than she ever loved David? Or is she trying to convince David that she loved John Jansen more than she loved him? Whatever the deal is, John Jansen don't love you as much, clearly. And I laughed my butt off when Heather made that comment. What is she supposed to do? Act like she's just been hit with the men in black light and she doesn't remember all of this crap? And then I felt bad because just like the meeting with Emily, Heather starts crying. And then Shannon tries to play her talking about maybe she can put their lunch on the IMDB. You know what, Shannon? You have always been one of my favorites. Even though she's wacky and crazy and does too damn much and the feng shui and all the lemons and the oranges and all the stuff. You know, she's too much. I've always loved Shannon, but you are off the rails. You are off the damn rails. I'm hoping that last season's Heather shows up and handles you quick because you are getting on my nerves. You doing too much. I believe at this point, Heather is carrying this season. The girls seem to be focused on bringing down Heather and Jen this season. And Heather and Jen are the only ones that are standing strong still. Cut the mess. Not only that, has anybody noticed that even though they keep lying on Heather, Heather keeps apologizing to Shannon over and over again? Why are you apologizing for something that you didn't do? You didn't do it. Forget it. Emily even apologized to Shannon, and Shannon didn't deserve an apology, in my opinion. I can't wait for this reunion. I hope that Heather levels Shannon. Shannon should come to that reunion humbled after watching the full season. So they get to this really pretty little pumpkin patch. I thought it was really cute. I could see me and my girlfriends going there. As a matter of fact, when I feel better and I'm allowed to be around people again, we're gonna have to get together. So Gina asked Tamara if she heard about the CPS comment and she tried to act like she doesn't recall it. She doesn't know anything about it, but she was just in the car with Jen and she told Jen, yeah, I remember that. Tamara is full of shit. I can't stand this woman. It's something about her. Oh, she just, in my friend group, her and I would never get along. We would never be friends. Well, somebody says that Shannon brought up CPS and Heather says, what? Crazy Taylor, CPS stands for Child Protective Services. Heather looks at her, she says, I know that. I mean, what? Everybody knows that. Pipe down, Taylor. 
anyway, she says, really? So no one can bring up John Jansen and your perfect relationship, but you can throw out CPS and people's kids and it's okay. That's what I thought, Heather. So before they could get into anything, this lady comes out, they all have their pumpkins and Tamara makes it extremely vulgar extremely vulgar while they're cutting out their pumpkins and it's always her nothing can ever be a grown-up ladies day out we're gonna have a great time here at the pumpkin patch we got to turn it into some kind of vulgar nasty mess and Taylor said I said I was bringing out some women I didn't say ladies Absolute. Before Gina has the opportunity to pull Shannon to the side to ask her about this CPS comment, here comes Tamara. Oh, apparently Jen went back and told Gina that you made some sort of comment about CPS and her kids. Really? You couldn't give Gina the opportunity to confront Shannon on her own. Shannon gets all indignant, screaming across the table. Jen, did you tell her that I said that? I never said that. I never said that. I would never say anything like that. Jen says you absolutely said it. And not only did you say that, you also said that her mom contacted you. How the hell would I know that? Team Jennifer, stand strong, okay? And Team Heather too. This is bullshit. You are out of your damn mind. Heather says, so where did she pull this from? So she just pulled this out the ass of the pumpkin? I mean, that's what Tamara was calling it, nasty woman. Anyway, Jen gets even more pissed off, not only because Shannon is acting all mad and outraged, she would never, but Tamara is sitting back acting as if she didn't just say that she remembered in the car. Now all of a sudden you're at the table, you don't remember Taylor, who is riding Tamara's coattails, she don't remember. You know, come on now. Come on now. This is ridiculous. You know, the problem is, Tamara's going to say that she doesn't remember because she was drinking too much. That's a bunch of bullshit. She sits there at the table acting all holier than thou. She would never say anything like that. She doesn't care what your girl thinks. She doesn't care. Then all of a sudden, she has this fake anxiety attack. Girl, you and your anxiety kick rocks. You said what you said. You and Tamara can no longer keep on saying that you are acting and behaving this way because of the alcohol that you are drinking. You both are grown women who claim that you don't have a problem. Stop drinking then. Because if it gets to the point where you cannot remember anything that you are doing and saying, which clearly you can't, you don't remember telling all these women all these different things about you and John Jansen, you're drinking too much. And Gina ate Shannon's ass up in those confessionals. She said, listen, you're a liar. I know that you're a liar. And if you can't remember what you're saying because you are too damn drunk, it's time to go to rehab. Team Gina. And we're trying to lie and say, Jen may have just been twisting things. Really? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Jen, please eat Tamara up at the reunion. And then Tamara brings up some kind of comment that Shannon said at some point that Travis had a small penis. Okay, why do you need to bring that up? Why are you embarrassing this man and his penis on TV? And Gina took it way better than me because first of all, don't talk about my man's business. Second of all, if you want to bring up my man's penis, don't let me put all your business out in the street. I'm already pissed at you for bringing up my kids. Girl, you have crossed the line and you are now in danger. You know what? It has been really bad. Tabra and Shannon, they really did try with a little bit of help from Gina and Emily earlier in the season to take down Heather and Gina, Heather and Jen. And you know, it's, it didn't work. It, it, it came off kind of sad and bad. What you tried to do to Heather and Jen, it, it, it didn't work, ladies. So then later, Tamara tried it and it failed. She tried to come for Heather and Terry and their um, paparazzi photos, calling them fake or whatever. And you know what? Heather ate Tamara's ass up real quick. Tamara, you have egg on your face. Heather is top notch. When in hell did I become a huge Heather Debro fan? I don't know, but Heather is killing it this season and she is giving everything housewife should give. I'm tired. I'm tired. She ate you up. Said, yeah, when there's smoke, there's fire. You know what else? There is fucking arson. 
I mean, she is tired. She is tired. She is done. She said she didn't even want to tell them about the new house and the selling of the old house. She's tired of these ladies. And I agree. Don't share your information with them. Another thing Emily was right about. At the end of the episode, Emily was absolutely right. Shannon, even though she says she didn't remember, she could have apologized to Gina and she didn't. But she she talked about Travis and, you know, all this other stuff. And what Emily said is, she said, I still feel there's a double standard. That comment about Travis, if it had been about John Jansen, Shannon would have lost her shit. And that is true. If anybody said that John Jansen had a tiny penis, Shannon would have lost it instead of running off with this fake ass anxiety. I'm tired of Shannon. I'm tired. And I'm literally tired. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.